Welcome to Stoughton Media Access Corporation's Community Forum Show. My name is Steve Kelly, I'll be your host today. And today I'm delighted to bring you a group of professionals who are here to update us about the upcoming brand new library project. Uh, to my left, I have Pat Basler. To her left, I have Joel Woke. Joel is the group's, um, what do we say, the project, uh, project lead? Or how, do you, how we describe what you do, Brian? I am the uh, vice chairman of the library building committee. The vice chair of the library building committee. Thank you for sharing That's that. That's okay. And, and then we have Tom Gensunis over on the far left. And Tom, you have been hired by the town to help the town uh, bring the project forward. Is that right? That's correct. I'm from Daedalus Projects Incorporated out of Boston, Mass. And we are here to help the town build this beautiful library. Okay, great. And to my right, I have Maureen Doherty, the town's procurement officer. Welcome, Maureen. Thank you. All right. And to her right is Gary Alacqua, who's a member of the same board with Joel. And Gary's been with the project for 10 years. Welcome to the show, Gary. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'd like to start the show by asking Pat. Um, Pat, give us the big picture about um, why... Stoughton needs a library. I realize that this is a, a quote-unquote done deal. Everybody's approved it, but I don't think everybody's on board that that you spend, uh, let's say, 15 million or 20 million or whatever million in addition to whatever million we're going to spend on a new um, high school. So why does it make sense? Okay. I'm not sure how far to go back with all this, but let me just say, in general, libraries um, are transforming the lives of people over time. They're not just a place to store books anymore. They're really a community center. It's a place for people to come and meet, um, to continue their education. We have a very uh, active adult literacy program where we have new people coming to the country and the town, um, and they need to learn English so that they can become you know, parts of the community. They need to uh, expand their education and their knowledge, become workers, pay taxes, all of that. Um, we also have a Monday night homework center that is uh, mobbed every Monday night with middle and high school students, and they are there to get free homework help so that they can do better in school and become uh, good citizens as they grow up. Um, that's run by volunteer uh, college students at Stonehill College, and it's also run by um, high school honor society volunteers. Uh, and that's been so successful over the last 10 years, actually, that the school system pays for the three teachers that run that program. So those are just two services off the top of my head that are unusual, uh, but they make a big difference. They have a big impact on the people who live in the town. And the goal of a library, uh, every library in every town uh, services a different population. But for Stoughton, continued education, learning English, um, giving people the skills to um, really become successful adults is, is what we try to help people do. So um, what I like about that is that this is a place of community building. And, and I think that that's the, the centerpiece of what libraries uh, like this one will do in the future. So, um, having said that, it couldn't stay the way it was. We have uh, problems with asbestos. T tell me a little bit about how this project is going to neutralize um, what might have been a, an expenditure that had to be done anyways. Okay. So the building was built in 1969, and previous to that, we had this lovely little library, which is now the Historical Society. I think that's number six Park Street. Um, and you can still visit that. But this building was built in 69 to be the library of the future. It's a very modern building. Um, it was built with all state-of-the-art materials of the time. Um, but unfortunately, they put um, linoleum tiles in two-thirds of the building that have asbestos in the tiles and the mastic that glues the tiles down. Uh, we did a hazardous material study. There's asbestos in the um, spackle between the wallboard seams. Mm -hmm. What's the word for that more? Joint compound. Joint compound, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's also asbestos in the glazing around all the windows. Uh, it was built as a very energy efficient building of its day, but and it's built into ledge, so it's very uh, heat uh, efficient. But for, for this day, um, my bills are to heat the building by gas is $7,000 for the year. 
to air condition it in the summer is 35,000. So over the course of time, that's only gonna get worse. Um, we need a new building that is designed to create more shade in the front on Park Street, um, triple glaze win you know, windows that are more energy efficient and will reduce uh, heat intake. Um, that's, that's a cost over time that is just gonna continue to grow. So we've got the asbestos issues. It's not ener as energy efficient as it could be. Um, the roof has been out of warranty. We're on our third rubber roof. It's been out of warranty for 10 years. Um, it's a poured concrete slab floor, which makes it a very sturdy steel and concrete building, but there's no storage space anywhere. There's no space, there's no basement, there's no attic, and the, the four or five closets that we have also have HVAC, uh, air conditioning and heating units in, them. in the closet. All right, so you've made a case. Right? Yeah, I'm let's, just let's telling you Joel, some of the problems. Let's go to Joel and say, Joel, you, you come, in, come on the scene and you agree, and, and what did you do? How, how was it that you became involved and why? Um, I uh, am one of that infamous group of uh, retired on fixed income. Uh -huh. And so this allows me the time to do things that I really like to do, which happens to be working on public buildings. Uh, before I retired, I spent many, many years in the construction industry. I was an owner's project manager, and I did schools or recreational buildings and various other places. Um, so I understand public construction very well, and I understand public construction from the point of view of the owners. I also uh, personally feel that buildings like the library uh, are an investment in the community. That's the way I was brought up. And I feel that even though I haven't lived in Stoughton my whole life, uh, this is something I think makes the community better. And when that makes the community better, it makes my life in the community better from a selfish point of view, okay? Yeah, no, that's fine, okay. it's a bit self-serving. <laughs> but how, how many of us wouldn't want to self-serve ourselves in the way of having a great community? Well, that's I agree. Wrong. And <laughs> the reason why I'm on this particular committee is uh, as uh, this committee is appointed by the town manager, and uh, he recognized that not only did I have the time and desire to serve, but I also had the skills and experience he was looking for to work with the owner's project manager that uh, we have retained to make sure that the town gets, I would like to say, the best bang for their buck and uh, that things are done correctly. Well and said, then, by the way. And like then it. when we're done with it, uh, we can look at the building and it'll be something that we're not only proud of, but it'll be self-sustaining over a number of years and will be, like I say, a good investment for the town that we should be done. So I have served in uh, another town that I moved here from on the building committee there. So for 14 years, so I'm familiar with how building committees work, I'm familiar with how public construction works, I'm familiar about how investment works in the town. And I should also point out that Mike, uh, the town manager also appointed me to the high school building committee, which I am also serving on also as the vice chair. Excellent. Well, uh, one thing though, I talked to Pat's husband, and anybody that, that she has sort of direct control over, he wants to counsel, so I'm wondering if, <laughs> if you've been enrolled in the program yet. So I just want to point that out. Um, okay, I'll so, keep that in mind. Um, all yeah, right, okay. so that's good. So now, Tom, you are going to be under the direct control, or with certainly with Pat as well. Um, Joel um, is going to be the liaison. Is that, would that be how we say that? Really, it's the entire committee that we work with, and we are here to help facilitate all of the work with the contractor, with the designers, and make sure that the town of Stoughton gets, as Joel said, the best bang for their buck. We, you know, we'll review the budget, we'll review the drawings, we'll, we'll really push to make sure that this is the best project that it possibly can be. Um, and done on time and within the budget that's been allowed for and allocated by the community. And what is that budget? Do we know the budget number? The budget is, um, total construction project is approximately $14 million. And $14 million. Now, let me, we're going to go to money, so let me swing to my procurement officer right here. <laughs> so, um, Maureen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, tell us about where we're going to get $14 million. It was started before, long before I, I came to the town, but it was through Pat's hard work and Gary's hard work that they lobbied for a new building through the library board. They applied for grants through that. They got funding from the grant to put towards a new library, and then they got funding from town meeting. So we're a fully funded project right now of $14 million. 
And what percentage who did they get? Uh, was a grant? I think it was nailed 50%. Yeah. So almost $7 million? Yes. Now, what is your role in um, a situation where we've already, we already have a, an owner's um, person in front, right, a project manager? Mm -hmm. um, we know how much it is. We already have it funded. What does the procurement officer do now? Well, I procured the services. Well, I there was a team of us, the designer selection group that's appointed by my comp, and we gather and s several staff members, and we put together the bid document, a solicitation document, based on the qualifications that we think would best suit the the needs of Stoughton. We wanted a firm that had depth in it, that had expertise in budgeting, estimating, technical expertise, the ability to then provide us when we go into construction with a day-to-day -day person that is our on-site rep. So we looked at all of our criteria that was important to us. We looked at the fact that we wanted somebody that had library experience and a firm that had a lot of public experience as well. We had 12, 13 firms oh uh, submit qualifications to us. Then we shortlisted them down to four firms. Three of them accepted for an interview. And after the interview process, Daedalus really fit our needs the best. Right size and right type. And right size, right type, good experience, uh, good reputations in the field. We checked, we checked them out thoroughly and we feel that they are the best fit for the, the project. Now they'll submit AIA documents for each phase of subcontracting and all that? Well, not necessarily AIA documents. Our next step of the process, which we're, we're out to bid right now with seeking qualification packages, for designer. The designer then under controlled construction in Massachusetts is the owner of the construction. They certify that it's built in according with the state building codes and all those other legal requirements for buildings that they have to do. They prepare the construction documents. They work with any commissioning agents or any other agents that we bring in. They oversee the project is legally they're responsible. The owner's project manager basically represents the town. They work for us to make sure that our needs are represented to the designer and to the contractor as well so that if we didn't have such a good committee that was so experienced, other committees have lacked in that integral relationship building and Daedalus will do a very good job at, at building a good relationship for everybody to get a peaceful and project that comes to a happy conclusion. <laughs> Um, as a, the town's procurement officer, you're neutral about this, right? Yes. You're just supposed to get it done. But you actually <coughs> want to see us with a good library. Well, tell me about that. I do. I, as part of a procurement officer, I get to learn about everything I bid. So if I'm bidding out something, I, I ask a lot of questions, lots of questions, and say, well, why do you need this? How come you do this? So that I can basically extrapolate the information I need so that I need I met in that in that written document. So I've been over to Pat's library. I've participated in events there. I'm part of Stoughton Reads, and I was amazed at how busy that library is. It's not your typical library. You don't walk in there and have to whisper. Yeah, it's not a there's, quiet place. <laughs> there's, oh, there's quiet sections, but it's just uh, uh, such a a happy, active place. I was I was pleased. So I'm happy for for Pat and for the town to be able to get this project yeah, moving funding forward. For, for a vibrant yeah. community center. It yeah. really, it meets a lot of needs for people and it's so very well thought of. Good, good. Now Gary, um, give us a sense of the, the window of time when you first became interested in this and you use the, the internet over at the library. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Um, actually, when I, I was on the finance committee, we bought the properties to, um, to, to raise the houses so we could get more parking for it because mm -hmm. then, we knew that we need a new library. It's, it's, it's not handicap accessible. The HVAC kit, um, equipment is way outdated. Um, there's not enough room. Um, the new design has it so Pat will be able to work with the staff. To, we'll be able to oversee basically everything that's going on on two, on two different levels. 
and stuff. And um, I think we need a nice new building to add to the, the, the center of town until we eventually we get the center, mm -hmm. done, something done with that so that it's, it's um, um, make the town look better and help our property values. And, and like, like Maureen said, the amount of people that go through there is amazing. Um, and yes, it's not just books. There's a lot of different things that go on there. And so, when did you get started? Was it uh, how did you? I end was up on, on the this finance committee? committee, and then then Pat um, developed a, um, a building committee. And there's been problems with building committees in the town prior to this. But she picked the committee that there was different strengths. Like my strength was I was a town meeting rep. I was on the finance committee. Um, I knew how things work and how to get through that. And you're um, in construction. We have different people. You, you, also, you own a construction company yes, as well, I'm, right? Yes, I'm an electrician. An electrician, so, so, yeah, so, yeah, so you, you have a good understanding of integrating yes, the things, trades. Yeah, yeah. Of how things get, uh, get done. But we have um, people that work for uh, big um, companies that um, have done this. Um, um, Joe Palermo is on this committee who's going to be supposedly, um, he's going to be helping us with all the um, uh, change orders. Um, Pat Colburn, um, who's on the finance committee, she's a finance person. She's got helping, that. there's a budget committee that she's, um, that she's on that with um, Joel and um, a couple of people with the town that to, to, to watch the budget to make sure that we get things in on time in addition to watch with working with um, the data list people. Um, and, Lynn uh, Jarden. What's that? Lynn Jarden. Oh, Lynn, Lynn Jarden's also on the committee. And, um, um, she's uh, uh, on the planning board. Um, so it's, so she has it's a good understanding of, of right. the things yes, that will have to take place. Everybody has something to contribute. And if we, but, uh, Mark Tisdale's also on it. And, um, so the town uh, engineer. So. Yeah, the town engineer. Harvey the town, Levinson. Is that? Yeah. Harvey Levinson's on Harvey, it. Yeah, Harvey, yeah. who's the uh, oh, chairman pretty. of the uh, library. Um, board of the board of directors, directors. and now Paul Guafone, who's the uh, uh, facilities facilities right. manager. Yeah, so, so, yes, so you've there's, got there's all a wide right range people. of people, right? There's professional, mm -hmm. some town employees, and then you know, then there's, um, then there's the town residents and stuff that uh, volunteer the time for the project. All right, well, well, let me talk a little bit about. Um, th there seems there's also a need for a. Is it a redesign phase? Tell me, tell me about uh, just before you jump off. What, what do you have to do? So. When this started, back when Gary first got involved, the trustee, when I got hired in 1998, and this is really Stoughton's library. I, I love it that you guys say this is Pat's library, but it really <laughs> is Stoughton's library. And I, I will go away, and this will still be your library. But um, when I got hired in 98, Harvey Levinson was the chair of the board of trustees, and he still is. And we have a great board, uh, all volunteers. And they said to me, we have to start planning for a new library. And I, I look at that building as a steel, it's a bunker. I mean, it's, it's indestructible. So I thought, what, what are they talking about? We don't need a new library. And then a after a couple of years of working there, I realized, like Gary said, we didn't have a handicap accessible elevator. We tried for three years to, to replace it. That didn't happen with town meeting. Um, the parking issue was a chronic problem, basically by the town investing in buying those two houses next door getting rid of the, the houses and then putting in a new parking lot. Um, we've doubled the parking for that building. So the town had over time invested in that location. So then when we got the grant uh, back in 07, I think, to do a, a preliminary feasibility and design study, Gary was on that committee as, I think we had 15 people on that mm -hmm. original committee. And again, it was a wide variety of people that the town manager had appointed to um, make sure that we, we covered all the bases and that we could really help the town understand that this was important. We had a lot of very well-respected people on the committee at the time. Then after we got the grant and town meeting voted the money, we sat on the waiting list for four years. During that time, we, nothing happened. We didn't have a building committee. Uh, we couldn't do anything. We had to just wait until we got to the top of the list so that they would release the funds and we could get going. Um, I've had seven town managers since I've been here. Um, Mike Hartman is our current town manager, and he has been, he and everybody in town has been extremely supportive of the project. He appointed a really great building committee that Gary just described. Uh, Joe Palermo is a vice president of pre construction for Skanska. It's like it's an international, they built Giant Stadium. I mean, they, mm -hmm. so we have really great people on the committee that every step of the way have been able to help us decide uh, to make good decisions so that the town won't end up with a building that doesn't function and mm -hmm. that will 
a building that isn't going to cost more than we really need. Um, so the next step is, uh, which I could never have done this by myself. I, the trustees have pushed along all the way, but I'm not a procurement officer. I, I've taken some of the classes, but I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I had to be responsible for <laughs> Please, putting... can you sleep at night? <laughs> I do sleep at night. She, she knows the rules. I mean, it, it's a big, complicated process to put... I, I thought, oh, well, you just put an advertisement out, you get a couple applications, you pick who you want. You actually have to put out requests for qualifications. Then you look at all the qualifications after, you, after, like Maureen said, you design what you want. And you have to make those bid documents so specific so that you actually get the person you want. Because we're still obligated on some level to hire the people that come in with the lowest bid, mm -hmm. unless we have reasons not to accept them. And that's where a lot of towns get in trouble because they're, they don't have good bid documents. Right. And then, then they're stuck with people who, th who they know are going to fail. So we, I feel, are never going to be in that position because between Maureen and Joel and our committee, we really have a, a good process. Right, and tightened it down to, oh, it's, it's to make sure fabulous. that it's fabulous. Yeah, it's, it's like in my 17 years here, this is the moment in time where all the right people are in the right places to make this happen. Um, and Gary knows, we have been pushing this ball forward slowly for quite a while. So the next step for Maureen and the committee will be to, and I'm just somebody who sits on the committee now. I, this is not my responsibility right. anymore. It's sort of taken on a life of its own, which is great. <laughs> um, but the next bid documents will have to be tight enough to hire a really good um, design designer architectural firm right and like Maureen explained they supervise uh, they make all the decisions about the general contractors and all that stuff right. um, but every step of the way we'll have meetings we'll analyze the bills we'll if we have to make changes uh, during the process that will happen they could start tearing a wall down in situate they tore a wall down after they they did all the same things we did and they found a problem that they weren't unaware of that cost you know an unexpected expenditure um, I think there was, what was it, asbestos in the... In the, walls, in the walls behind the brick facade. Yeah. Ah. Unforeseen so, condition. Yeah. So they had tested everything like we, I mean, we drilled holes in the walls, we tore up the floor, but this was just one little part that they hadn't done yeah. a test on. And so. it was materials that were banned five years prior to the construction. Oh. So nobody, so it, shouldn't have, it shouldn't have been used. Yeah, it shouldn't have been used, but yeah. that wasn't that, So that, that's the kind of thing. I mean, you know, years ago, until we got decent, I mean, Massachusetts has some of the strictest building procurement laws in the country now, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, but in the 70s, that wasn't the truth. And our building got built in 69. So, you know, it could be there's some weird things that might still show up. So to have people who actually know what they're doing and know what they're looking for is huge. Um, I don't know which, who among you might take this question, but um, what about the transfer? Where, where do all the things in the library go and to where and how soon and how does that uh, gum up the works of actually building a building, renovating and building? Well, the, the design process will take approximately a year for the entire design process to move forward. So sometime around the end of 2016 is when, at, you know, the design would be completed, then we'd go out to bid for the contractors. So actual construction of the new building would begin um, end of February, early March of 2017 and progress through the entire calendar year 17 and into the beginning of 18. So in that time frame, obviously, the committee on the library needs to be in a different facility. We're talking a major renovation here. Okay. Um, so they'll have to go to temporary space, um, and the committee, Pat, myself, are actually scouring through the town now looking for uh, appropriate temporary space. Right. And part of that big question is what programs will continue, what programs will be suspended, what programs will happen potentially in other areas, not the temporary library. All of those questions are being muddled and... and um, blended and synthesized and analyzed um, yeah. as we move forward and trying to figure out, again, wh where the best location will be in the community for all of that to happen. And there's a budget for that for a rental? 
Yeah. yeah. Yes. We had put that in. It, it, it's been a real process, though. Um, Daedalus is also doing the Situate Library, and they, what was their original uh, square footage? Over 20,000 square Correct. feet? Correct. So they're in, if you know Situate, they're in what used to be Pier 44. It's a little restaurant, and it's about 5,000 right. square feet. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. So I, I can, our building's two, two stories, and it's 22,000 square feet, and I can't imagine. They're not putting you in a shoebox, are they? Yeah, I, well, I, I, I don't says. know. <laughs> it's, it, it's hard to get your head around it. So we, although we can't, uh, the process for um, renting that space next year, we'll, Maureen will do that as well, and she'll put it out to bid, and th there's a whole process procurement-wise that has to be followed. But since Tom's from, where are you from, Watertown? Marlboro. Marlboro. He, he, doesn't, Watertown. he doesn't know really the Stoughton area, so Gary and I and Paul Jaffoon drove around with him last week just to show him some typical commercial property um, just up and down really 27 and 138. Right. And, you know, every time we got back in the car, I was like, Everything seems to be five or six thousand square feet. I need ten or twelve or fifteen thousand square feet. How <coughs> how is this all going to happen? So you know, over time, something will make itself apparent. Right. But the the issue is, we have um, only two meeting rooms right now. One holds about one hundred and fifty people. One is a small conference room. Those are booked three or four times each every day. So do we cut our children's programs? Do we stop adult programs? Do we find other programming space so that we're in like a five or 6,000 square foot space and then we send staff out to do programs somewhere else? We're open to anything and we'll, we're willing to do almost anything. But that's it's the blending, muddling, that's exactly. the, yeah, assimilating, like, analyzing oh, that we yes, were talking about. It's yes. difficult. Yeah. Um, and the other part of it is the MBLC kind of recommends that you take, we have a hundred and currently we have about 120,000 items in the building. So they say heavily weed, you know, do reports and figure out the stuff that hasn't gone out in five years and just get rid of it. Take about a third of your collection that's valuable and store it somewhere off site, which we have to look for space for that as well. And then take a quarter or a third of your collection with you. Um, I still will have a book budget so I can continue to buy new books. But during this time frame, we will be a network borrower. So Stoughton has always prided itself in being a network lender in Old Colony Library Network. Yes. So we lend more, we're a medium-sized library. The smaller libraries are all borrowers. Medium and larger sized libraries lend more than they borrow. We're happy to lend, that's what we do. And you know, it, it, all, it all works out fine. Um, during this year or year and a half, we're gonna be a network borrower. We're gonna have a very small collection and everybody that we have been generous to over the years will help us out. That's just, it's reciprocal borrowing. We all, we all do that all the time. Mm -hmm. So, Access to materials, I think, won't be a problem. Uh, access to a small space where we still can provide uh, internet access, hopefully continue the adult literacy program on the same level that we're doing now, potentially still do the homework. I mean, we're open 64 hours a week. Um, one of the things we might look at now is that slide because we have a, a fact sheet that we put together every year that just kind of gives you the numbers of how many people come in and out of the building. Oh, here it go. Oh, this is great. So in the course of uh, fiscal 15, we had 158,601 patrons visit the library. Um, that's basically around five or 600 a day. Yeah, 3,000 a week, right? Some, or better. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're open six days a week, um, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 9 to 5 Friday and Saturday. Um, you know, some days we get 1,000 people in the building depending on the programming. Um, 152,844 items were borrowed, 14,223 patrons attended programs, that's of all ages, um, 16,328 patron uh, uses of the public computers. And that's the thing that really boggles my mind. It, people think, oh, you, you do everything on the internet now and we, we don't need uh, libraries anymore. A lot of people don't have access to the internet at home. Uh, after, since 2009, during the recession, we've seen a huge increase in uh, the demand on these public computers because people have lost their jobs, they've disconnected the internet, they can't pay for the internet uh, connection at home. 
we have a lot of seniors who come in and read the paper because they canceled their subscription to mm -hmm. the paper. You know, it, it just uh, it provides a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Uh, but those numbers really do tell the story. Those are all, if, you, if I look at data from 10 years ago and now, all those numbers we looked at are somewhere between 8 and 20 percent higher than they were 10 years ago. So nothing is declining. So much more use. Much more use. Well, um, what I'd like to do is um, I'd like to ask, uh, first of all, I want to give some credit out back to behind the scenes. Uh, Roy Cohen today is uh, not only the executive producer, but he's doubling behind the cameras. Uh, Gina Co is the assistant ex executive producer. We've got Jeff Pickett helping out, Dave Young, and Mike Hammond behind the scenes. So we want to say thank you to all those folks. Um, we wanted to uh, perhaps roll the credits a little early today. So when Gina gets a chance, we have Gary Lapierre comes in and uh, gives some credits for all of the things that we need to do. And then we'll come back to our guests and sort of uh, have e give each of them an opportunity to uh, give, give us like their final two things they want to get across. So uh, Gina, if you can uh, run credits right now, that'd be great. Hi, it's Gary Lapierre and the crew wants to thank mm Mm, mm, Maxie's, Maxie's Delicatessen. That's at 117 Sharon Street in Stoughton. They're 781-341-1662. American Cancer Society. Yes, they're looking for volunteers. Drive cancer patients to and from their treatments. 1-800-ACS-6662. Or just go to www.cancer.org. Ilsa Marks Food Pantry in St. Anthony's Free Market, 2 Park Avenue in Stoughton. For more information, call Christine Gallagher. That's at 781-341-0611 or 781-341-0549. Meals on Wheels. Just ask for Jessica. You'll find her at 781-344-8882, extension 2. Stoughton Penny Saver. Our business is advertising your business, they tell us. 27 Rose Glen Street, Stoughton, 781-344-4833. Community Forum Showtimes in Stoughton. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 6 p.m. Monday at 8 p.m., Tuesday at 5 p.m. It's on Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 28. All comments and suggestions welcome. Contact us at communityforum1 at yahoo.com. Community Forum Showtimes in Easton, Mondays at 9 p.m., Tuesday at 8 a.m., Wednesdays 3 p.m., Saturday 10 a.m., and that too, Comcast Channel 9, Verizon Channel 22. Samaritans, they're at 41 West Street in the fourth floor in Boston, 02111. Their phone number is 617-536-2460, 24-hour helplines for Samaritans, and the number is 877-870-HOPE. 877-870-4673. Samaritans, you can find them at 800-252-TEEN. That's 252-8336. Or find them online at SamaritansHope.org. Well, we're almost back on set, but before we do come back, uh, we want to also apprise you of Monday Night Bingo at a Havath Torah congregation. Uh, Havath Torah is an incredible congregation here in Stoughton, they do all kinds of work. And if you'd like to go to Bingo, this is a great thing. 1179 Central Street, Stoughton. Doors open at 4.30, the games start at 6.30. Tons of prizes, tons of fun, food too. We also have um, a wonderful spelling bee for the fifth grade coming up. The Smack All School Fifth Grade Spelling Bee, Monday, February 22nd at 7 p.m., the Stoughton Great Hall, third floor. Fifth graders from all five Stoughton elementary schools will compete. They'll have all kinds of great new words like pellucid, any kind of interesting word that you can think of. Watch live on Comcast Channel 9, Verizon 28. Um, there is a snow date, February 29th, but we're hoping for no snow. And uh, I, I like to think that anyone who wins a spelling bee is a surefire bet to go on to a successful life. And if you lose a spelling bee, the same bet because you tried. So come on down to the fifth grade spelling bee. And Hometown Business Show. This week we have a new show starting Stone Lovin' will air tonight. Um, Tuesdays at 11 a.m., Wednesday at 5.30. So at 8 p.m. tonight, Sundays at 7, you can learn about uh, a business right here, either in town or serving the town. In this, in this case, it's Stone Lovin'. 
Again, you watch on Comcast 9 and Verizon 28. So we're back here with our library group and they're updating us on uh, just how quickly uh, we're gonna have a champagne toast out in front of the steps of a completed library somewhere in the vicinity of 2018. So we'll be looking to um, have a toast out there with these fine people who have uh, either volunteered or at least put a great effort um, in their own work uh, that relates to this. So uh, Tom Gadzunas, who is Daedalus, Daedalus? Daedalus. Daedalus, Daedalus um, who is gonna be the owner's rep. Um, what are a couple of things that you'd want everybody to know about your company or just moving forward about this project? That, well, the Daedalus has done a significant amount of libraries in the Commonwealth, and we are here to work with the community and with this great design team that has been established by the town manager to move the project along both on time and on budget and give Stoughton the library that it deserves. Well said. Thank and, you. uh, you've done this before. Yes, we have. <laughs> Multiple times. <laughs> great. Joel, what about yourself? Tell us a little bit more. Well, um, as I said, um, I've had a lot of experience and uh, brought together a lot of expertise in public construction. Um, I feel that my role on the building committee is to make sure that, as I said before, the town of Stoughton gets the best bang for the buck. Working with Daedalus, who I have a great deal of respect for and I have worked with before, uh, when I was working, uh, uh, I think that we're going to uh, end up uh, having a terrific thing. Uh, as far as uh, my role in terms of oversight, I'm going to be looking at uh, making sure that the taxpayers, of which I am one, uh, get uh, a good deal here and they're going to get their money's worth and that's why I'm on this committee. Joel, I think um, that's, I don't want to understate the role that you have. Um, the how lucky is the town? to have somebody who's experienced and willing to put their best foot forward to make this happen. Um, I, I really think we ought to thank you. Um, you've done a lot of work already, and there's a work ahead. So uh, we don't want to take people like you for granted, and especially in this retirement role, um, you could be doing Florida, Europe, um, any number of other places. <laughs> And you choo you're choosing to spend time. I did say retired time. on fixed income. You did hear yeah, that. we did hear that. Okay, all right. <laughs> now, do you have grandchildren, Joel? Uh, not yet. Not uh, yet? As a matter of fact, I called my daughter. You're going to make day. a call and say, I called Let's my get daughter and I yet. said, I'm ready for grandchildren. And she said, you have better luck at Shaw's. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> She's giving you a little pushback yeah, there. Yeah, a little pushback. Yeah, so I think not he, yet. younger yeah. people are smarter than we were. I think they, they want to <laughs> hold off and enjoy life a little bit. Right? Yes. So that's good. All right, Joel, thanks. So let me just go back over to um, Maureen. So uh, Maureen, what are like, the things that you think, uh, if you were watching the show, what would you say? I want to know this about the library and, and about the town's connection to the library. Well, as far as the town's connection to the library and what I would want to know looking out, I think Pat did a great job at educating me. So if anybody hasn't been to the library, it, they need to go down and see it just to understand how viable it is, how active it is. Get involved in the Stoughton Reads, which is coming out soon. I, I look forward to my book. Now let's uh, tell us about that program. I mean, that's really what this is about, right? Community programs. What about Stoughton Reads? Perhaps someone hasn't seen that yet on on the show on TV. So tell us what is Stoughton Reads? The library. I'm not sure how the book is picked, but it's. I'm on my third book now. And it comes out every March and April. March and April. We're doing In the Heart of the Sea. That Pat picks a book. And the committee. We have the committee. committee. Oh, the committee yeah. picks a book. And from that book, it's one book for the community to read. And it's amazing because the first time I, my first year, I was like, wow, this is great. And it was on the Flagler Railroad. And I was going down to Key West at the time. So I looked at it. Oh, and yeah, saw Last Train to things. Paradise. Right. That was the name yes. of it. And yeah, yes. So and and, it, and he, uh, a millionaire built it and it, it all fell apart. It did. It was a bad yeah, storm that blew it all storm. over. But what was exciting about that is I made connections with other people that I might not normally talk to because you see the book is there. It's like, oh, you're reading the book. And it was just a nice way to, to bring the community together. So it was very good for me. And I feel that anything I can give back to Pat to help her get the library that that the town and the community deserves, I, I'm there. So if, um, if a taxpayer wanted to come in and 
Say, where are we in this project? Uh, show me a model or do something. What would you say to them? Well, I don't have a model, but I, I will say that on my procurement process that I do have a lot of experience. Public construction is my, is my forte with probably 25 years of public construction a bidding in contract management behind me that it's an open and transparent process through the years that I've been here in Stoughton people want to bid on Stoughton now when I first came I would get one response two responses just with the OPM having close OPM, to it oh, that's not pro other people's money right uh, no, OPM no no, no. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the, the onus OPM. project manager sorry I, I yeah, yeah. won't speak in acronyms but just to that, we had close to a dozen people. We have now, on the designer, 38 people have taken out the bid documents. Oh, great. And that's huge. Because yeah. in the beginning, Stoughton didn't have their reputation as, as, a, as a town that did the best by its bidding. So now we've cleaned up that reputation. People want to do business in Stoughton. And because of that, we're getting better and more qualified people to work in our town, to give our designers, to give our project management service. Well, thank you for that thank hard you. work. So now we're going to switch to the guy who can tell us the most about Champagne. So, <laughs> Gary, so tell us about the, the celebration you've got planned at the end. What's going to happen? What do, you, what do you envision? I envision this project getting done. Um, it, on, it, actually, on Maureen, uh, Maureen has a license to be a, a, a procurement officer. And uh, we were given this manual this thick of all the, the laws and stuff that we have <laughs> to follow uh, to get this project done. So yes. there's, there's a lot more to this than that, that's been said here. Um, I, I'm just um, I'm, I'm excited that this project is underway this far. And like we said, we've been working on this for a long time. Um, inch at a time basically is how it's going and um, yes I'm very happy that, that this is going to get done and people get to see the need why this town needs it and deserves this uh, pro project like this. Well said, well said Gary. Um, Gary's an electrician in town for those of you who don't know it you can call him at 781-603-5506 so if you have electrical <laughs> needs <laughs> Gary is good at this. All right so uh, now we're back to Pat. So oh. Pat <laughs> let's um let's carry on uh, this is local community tv this is about the community this is about sharing with people who share the, their um commitments to the library we can do a little sharing too it's okay all right so um, so I, I, I just want to remind everybody that this whole process has been pushed along for over 10 years by the library board of trustees <coughs> who are all volunteers the first building committee, all volunteers, and now the current building committee, mostly volunteers and some town employees. That's what makes Stoughton special, is this is the most volunteering town I have ever seen. You just put a note out and people show up. And speaking of volunteers, Stoughton had, the library has a group called SOLA, Support Our Library Association. Dory Frankel is the president of it. Some other really good people are on it. They have a fundraising coloring book that is being sold at the library for ten dollars. It's just, um, it's all ad adult, adult, um, let me see, we have one of Town Spawn here. It turns out, oh here's one of the library, but adult um, coloring, adult coloring is um, becoming a thing now. So people are um, taking out these coloring books and they get together in groups that w with people they don't even know and they are just, uh, it, it makes them calm. Therapeutic it helps them. It's therapeutic. therapeutic. Uh, <laughs> Chris Petrie, who's on, Petri, who's Petri, who's on our uh, SOLA committee, he said his 14-year-old daughter put her cell phone down and sat down with some friends and colored for like a couple hours the other night. It's just becoming an activity that people are enjoying. Um, Sharon Fradkin's daughter, Robin, <laughs> did this? <laughs> she did this too. Sorry. <laughs> she took all these iconic <laughs> buildings in town, like the Town Spa and the Historical Society, and she made a coloring book for us. So, anyway, it's a nice collector's item. Stop by the library, pick one up. We also will have um, a murder at the library play, I think, on April 30th. There'll be more details to follow on that, which is a fundraiser. And we also have a um, Downton Abbey tea, which is scheduled for Sunday, February 28th, at the library. 
Um, um, well, let's not just say Downton Abbey tea like everybody knows what Downton Abbey is. So now, come on. This is the Tell last, us about what Downton Abbey is. This is the last of, a, I think, a six-year run for this um, sort of British soap opera that's on every Sunday night called Downton Abbey. And uh, it takes place in the early 1900s, and it's sort of Edwardian and uh, Roaring Twenties kind of... Uh, lifestyle, but it, it takes place in a, a mansion in England, and people have loved it. And there's Downton Abbey cookbooks and just all sorts of things going on. So this tea will be in a, a, a really authentic tea. You come in, you, you know, you can come in garb that people would wear from the 1920s, hopefully. People will show up. We have a couple of uh, people on our SOLA committee that will act as the dowagers, um, which is great. And I am looking for uh, some men to come and be butlers and footmen to serve the tea. So if you happen to be around, I'll send you an email on that Sunday. Um, but I think it will be a lot of fun. We're looking for 80 to 100 people to come and enjoy uh, a Downton Abbey tea. The Council on Aging actually has over 100 matching teacups and saucers. So they're lending those to us, and it, it should be a lot of fun. Pat, tell us your first memory of your, the first time you ever set foot in any library. So I grew up in Connecticut with five brothers, and so we didn't have money to buy books or do, uh, to buy anything, really. And my mother took us to the library. And it was the fact that she would take six of us anywhere was always, I, I marvel at it now. But you know, you got in the station wagon, and we all drove down, and we went to the library, which was across from, um, it was in the center of town across from the church. And that, I just loved it. It was, you know. There was books. I didn't have to pay for them. I could take out whatever I wanted. And that, that was, it was a nice door to have open for me at a young age. And we, anybody who works or uses libraries feels that way. It's, it, libraries help protect democracy. They, they level the playing field for everyone. And it's funny, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll share a, a, a time. I, I went to the library and I don't remember the book, but I remember the imprint, um, the thing I stole from it. And uh, maybe something will come back. But, uh, the, the phrase that I learned was to be outspoken with firmness, kindness, and patience. Don't react, just be very aware. And I re remember reading that in a book at a oh. library, mm -hmm. and that stuck with me. Yeah. So I think, uh, and no doubt a free library, yeah. but um, you know, so, so the idea is that uh, being able to uh, take advantage of knowledge um, is behind all of what we're talking about, is in not only building community, but those things that are there. So um, I want to thank our guests. It's Tom Gadzunas from Daedalus, Correct. and the Owners thank Project you. Management, specializing in libraries. Specializing in public construction in Massachusetts, as public, well as private. Public construction. Joel Wolk, who is the vice chair of the Library Building Committee. Correct. And volunteering like mad, and doing a great job for the community. Gary Alacqua, an electrician here in town, volunteering for years, and also on solar, I assume. No, no, I'm not on the committee. But he's the chair of our committee. committee. But you're the Involved. chair of the committee, which we kind of glossed over. Yeah. And then lastly, we have Pat Basler and Maureen Doherty. And thank you all for watching. <laughs>